Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we are going to be reviewing Invasion of the Dinosaurs, Part 1. <coughs> now, I did watch this one in black and white, because I know while Episodes 2 through 6 exist on their original master tape, Episode 1 only existed as a telerecording, and the chromia dots, the blue chromia dot, I think, isn't there. So the recovery effort when they tried to use uh, the chromia dot recovery on it wasn't as effective as it was on a lot of the other stories and the the job they did to restore it to color isn't as effective and seems to be it's considered the Easter egg whereas the black and white version is considered the primary version here. So I watched it on the black and white version. It seemed the better way to go. And it's interesting for me because I've never watched an episode of the Pertwee era in black and white before. Which I know is not something several older Doctor Who fans would say because <clears throat> for the longest time some of the other Pertwee episodes only existed in black and white. Mind of Evil only existed in black and white. And episode 3 of Power of the Daleks, for example was only in black and white for a long time, but my first time watching those episodes were the DVD releases where they had been recolored, episode 3, Planet of Dallas, and Mind of Evil. I've only seen Mind of Evil in color, aside from a few excerpts I've seen in other documentaries. <coughs> so this was interesting for me, watching a Pertwee era in black and white, and it really was a little unusual. It's hard to explain, but... Like, the first few minutes I was watching it, before I adjusted, I was like, this is so weird. I almost recorded a reaction of it. Because I kept sitting here going, this is so weird. And it shouldn't be, because I watch 60s Doctor Who in black and white all the time, but for some reason, it was just weird. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it was really unusual. Pertwee, it's odd seeing Pertwee himself in black and white. And especially his hair. Something about his hairdo. Look weird to me in black and white. I can't put my finger on it, but seeing that, excuse me, that Series 11 hairdo of his in black and white looked really weird. I don't know why, but it did. And then, uh, of course, seeing Sarah Jane in black and white is a little unusual, too. But it was kind of, I don't know if surreal is the right word, but it definitely, it definitely took some adjusting to, even though I'm used to watching 60s Doctor Who all the time. For some reason, maybe it's because in my mind, I know it's not supposed to look like that. I know this was originally supposed to be in color, and maybe my mind's going, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. I don't know, but I did have to mentally adjust to it. Now, I like the fact that the title for part one is just Invasion. The fact that it doesn't say Invasion of the Dinosaurs. That way, people viewing this for the first time when it came out in the 70s, would have been surprised when, you know, when you first see that little pterodon or pterodactyl or whatever it is you're supposed to see flying around there. And then you actually see the dinosaur partway through the episode. Uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That was a nice surprise. It's kind of weird that, that you never have anybody tell the Doctor, hey, there's dinosaurs running around. They either don't answer him when he asks or they call them monsters. There's monsters. I'm like... How come nobody says, yeah, there's a bunch of dinosaurs running around? Though, to be fair, looking actual, at the actual dinosaurs, you would be like, well, they're dino... Uh, well, they're sort of dinosaur-monster hybrid things. They look kind of like dinosaurs, but not exactly. <laughs> would be a little more accurate. But it, it does strike me as plot convenience that they don't find out about dinosaurs running around sooner. Because the one guy in the building who threatens them with a gun doesn't tell them the military people won't tell him anything. <clears throat> and then the other prisoner with him just calls them monsters. I like how a lot of the episode... Um, well, I won't say a lot of the episode. Let me turn on the air conditioner. I'm dying over here. Yeah, that's better. I feel like I'm about to pass out and I'm not even hot. Um... I like how the first, like, eight minutes of the episode, we have no idea what's going on. There's just nobody on the streets or anything. I loved the first few minutes of this. Like, it shows the Doctor and Sarah Jane <coughs> presumably coming back from the events of the Time Warrior. Not necessarily. Who knows with Big Finish. 
but presumably. And I like the fact that when they arrive, everything is already weird. You know, there's nobody on the streets. I love the long panning shots before the TARDIS materializes. It does a really good job of setting up, okay, something is off here. Something is wrong. I enjoy that opening. I like watching the Doctor and Sarah walking around, knowing something's off and not knowing why and trying to figure out why. I enjoyed the suspense of that. And then, of course, we see the one military jeep and then the one guy who sneaks to his car and drives off and nearly runs down the Doctor and Sarah Jane. Again, kind of building the questions of what's going on here? Why is this happening? You know, more questions, more questions, more questions. Uh, obviously, there's some people. What's up? The Doctor following the guy in and he threatens him with a gun, tells him nothing. And then he leaves and when Sarah goes after him, the Doctor's like, no, Sarah, don't. He'll shoot you. That was pure fright on his face or something like that. When the doctor describes it as just terror, terror, I think is what he says, terror on the guy's face. I like that because the guy himself might not normally be a bad guy, but whatever has happened has terrified him so bad that it's made him like a cornered animal, you know, with his back up against the wall. You never know how they'll react. And then, of course, you hear the, the roar, the dinosaur roaring, and when they go back out there, the car has been just destroyed and the guy is dead on the ground. It does a good job of building that. I wish it had done that for longer. About eight minutes in, it cuts to that room with the unit with Benton and the Brigadier. Uh, and while they don't really go into details, it just talks about looters and stuff. And Brigadier talking about how that's not the main problem. I wish it hadn't cut to that quite so soon. Um, I wish there had been more time of just not seeing anybody, nobody out there, and the Doctor and Sarah almost alone out there. You know, I like those stories when you walk in and it's just the empty village, you know, like the beginning of the android invasion, you know, and there's nobody there when there's sure. There's something about an abandoned town that's just creepy, especially if, there's, if it's in a show and they're using camera angles properly to build the tension. There's something about an abandoned town, or, or like an abandoned ship, like if you, like the you know the was it Mary Celeste or whatever. Something about people not being there that makes it creepy and scary and off and atmospheric. And I love stuff like that. So I wish that had lasted longer in this story instead of it jumping about eight minutes into where you know it was showing unit. So we know at least some people are all right and coordinating. Um, I liked when the doctor and Sarah get captured and they're trying to talk to the guy and the doctor realizes really quick with the guy who's sitting down that we're not going to get anywhere with them. How old are you? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I, I do like learning that Sarah Jane is 23 right there. That's a neat little tidbit to know. Um, and I love when they take their photos. I love that whole scene with the photo taking. How the doctor gets his little number thing. He just he does that big grin for the camera to he turns the side. Oh, the right side's my good side, my good profile. You know? and he grin. I just love that little, almost shit-eating grin he does for it. And I like the fact Sarah does it too. She gets up there and does her little smile. And then the doctor wraps an arm around her. Now one of us together. I enjoyed that whole scene. I was laughing. You know, I'm, we're so used to Four and Sarah having that camaraderie and that rapport. But I really enjoy seeing that Three and Sarah have that as well. Now that I'm seeing more of season 11, because uh, until recently I had only seen Death to the Daleks and Planet of the Spiders. And they have that camaraderie in those episodes. And, of course, seeing them together in Five Doctors, where they also have that. Uh, it was nice seeing them establish that very quickly in Time Warrior. Uh, used by episode three, I'd say, in Time Warrior. And then seeing, especially how in Invasion of the Dinosaurs, they still basically just met but that they're getting along and kind of having that rapport and that bond forming already. I'm loving that. So I enjoy that scene for that because I do think John and Elizabeth look like they got on pretty well just themselves. Um, the dinosaur effects do look eh. Although, to be honest, I think being in black and white helps them here. Uh, watching episode one in black and white, I do think helps the dinosaur effects just a little bit. Um, I am enjoying the story so far. I'm looking forward to getting more into it. I want to give a shout out to Lance for sending it to me because Lance sent me this and Happiness Patrol and I very much enjoyed my watch through of Happiness Patrol. It's a fantastic 7th Doctor story. 
And I've always wanted to see Invasion of the Dinosaurs because what I've always heard about it is that the the effects are the dinosaur effects are terrible, but the story's phenomenal. And I already know some stuff that happens in it. Like I know, you know, with Mike Yates, I already know Mike kind of turns traitor there because I I know in Planet of the Spiders he's kind of trying to redeem himself. Um, <clears throat> but I am looking forward to seeing more of it. I've enjoyed episode one. I just wish it would have been further into the episode before unit and the military really showed up. I really liked the kind of, you know, empty town vibe going on at the beginning. I wish we'd had more of that. But I I enjoyed it, other than it feeling off from it being in black and white. I'm looking forward to the season 11 box set. Cause I'm sure that's going to be one of the big things they put money towards is colorizing episode one properly. Uh, and that's probably the reason why we haven't gotten the season 11 box set yet is because even though episode one of Invasions of the Dinosaurs is the only one we don't have on a master tape from the whole season, it's also the most prob problematic one I think we have left to do. So hopefully they'll get that taken care of and we'll get that season 11 set out soon. So Invasion of the Dinosaurs part one, or just Invasion if you prefer, what do you think of this one? Do you prefer it in the semi-restored color or just the black and white version? Which one do you like better? Maybe I'll watch the partially recolored one after I finish the story and do a review on it separately on just the color recovery itself. I've only seen bits and pieces of it. Uh, comment down below and let me know. I always enjoy hearing from you guys. Other things to do, click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me on that. There's a link to that down in the description below. I want to give a shout out to two of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane and The Fifth Doctor. I appreciate their continued support, just as I do the support of all of my patrons. I want to give a shout out to Lance as well for sending me this DVD and The Happiness Patrol. I'm very much enjoying both, so I really appreciate that, Lance. Uh, I have a link to my Amazon wish list down below, which is where he found those at and selected those for me. So if there is anything you would like to send me that's on my Amazon wish list, check that out. I update it regularly. I also have a P.O. box down there as well if there's anything you would like to send me. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.